we've got a really great topic today. And uh, it's about how to set things up to make an ask. And, and really, really, it comes with donor development, you know, and this is really post event type stuff. And we talked about this a little bit. We talked about, you know, a couple of episodes back and we kind of touched on it. I wanted to spend some time because I know that's something that happens. Everybody, we all, you know, what's the first thing we all do when we get to a, uh, we get done with our event. Anybody want to throw it out there? What's, what's, what's the first thing that you guys do? Clean up. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just say after the cleanup's done, we've gotten it, you know, we've ever kind of got everything settled up. We've got the stuff out. It's kind of a big sigh of relief, isn't it? You know, cause it's a lot of work. I mean, I don't, you know, events of any type, any shape, form or fashion are a lot of work. And, you know, especially on nonprofit professionals, because you got the burden of it. And, you know, we may have great staff and great, um, uh, you know, you got volunteers and committees and all that stuff and they're, they're, you know, they handle all that, but still, you know, at the end of the day, you guys are the ones that it falls back on. I mean, it just does. Everything comes back. And so when you do, it's like, holy cow, I'm just letting this big breath out. But what, one of the things that we see happening is, you know, that follow-up it's what do I do after the event? What do I do that? Well, we talk about, having a planned gratitude, a gl- gratitude plan. I mean, it's something specific. It's not just, oh yeah, maybe we ought to send out an email. It's no, this is what we will, what we do. This is, these are the steps. But in following that is also how do we identify and how do we convert that into going, making a significant ask with somebody um, who has capacity, who has the ability to write a six figure check, um, who we might want to get involved and do that. And, that's where, you know, following up on these events, this is, it's almost like, you know, everybody says, okay, I'm doing this and then taking the night off and I'm not picking on, uh, uh, you Jackie. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm laughing because literally how many of y'all take a vacation as soon as you get done and it's okay. I'm not going to pick on you too much, but how many of y'all, whenever you get done with your event, you say, I'm out of here. No one. Okay, you guys, we got to get on the truth deal here. Okay, Becky's, I wish. But I do know a lot of them, they do. They start talking. They, the first thing they do is they go, hey, yep, I'm done. I'm getting on a plane and I'm headed to the islands for whatever. I'm going somewhere. Yep. And, and they do that. And I would just suggest that you give it one more three to five days before you leave and not only do you get your plan gratitude in, but you all start, start profiling all the people that came to your event. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about just known quantity, the known people, but also the new ones that have come in because, you know, we did, had, we helped a, a, a university with an event and they had, they sold 10 trips, nine trips for uh, 11, you know, almost $11,000. And Trevor was having the conversation with the the person that was in charge of it and said, Hey, well, you know, they were like, yeah, this was great. We raised a bunch of money. Thank you. And he goes, and Trevor said, well, how many of those have you, you ever met before? Have you ever a relationship with? And what did he say, Trevor? Uh, he had not met. I mean, half of them. He had not even, I known. think it was like six yeah. out of six out of the nine that yeah. they had never, never had a conversation with. Yeah. It's pretty wild. And Trevor said, well, are you going to, are, are you going to start one? And he goes, that's a great idea. Yeah. And you just identified th- a major donor. You just you identified know? potentially major donors. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. does that mean they're going to write you a check for a hundred thousand? No. Does that mean that they can maybe, maybe, or maybe not. Does it mean they will? I think it's an invitation sudden, to have a conversation. That's for sure. That's what, you know, one of the things that this, these events are is donor identification. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how do we, how do we know? And I, I mentioned this, I don't remember if it was last week or the week before, literally, you know, the people I've seen, they're the best that do in this. They have somebody bird dog and everything. Mm-hmm. And somebody goes, what do you mean bird dog? Watching everybody who's bidding. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. I see over there on table number 27, he's been bidding on everything that comes up. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they had this table 27 did that and they yep. start doing that. Well, all of a sudden they realize, they go, look who that is. Yeah. And they say, well, that's, you know, 
uh, Trevor and Shelby Nelson. Well, who's that person bidding? Oh, that's their friend, my Matt. Mm-hmm. Well, who's Matt? Well, he's, you know, this and that, and it's just, it starts coming up and that's how this works. Can, and then you go to Trevor, Hey, I'd like to meet Matt. Yep. Come over there and you go over there and meet him or after yep. the event, say, we'd like to meet with him. Absolutely. They had a great time. Yep. They came in love. Yeah. He spent a bunch of money. Yeah, he did. Well, tell me about that. And you start having this conversation with this person and you realize that they're really connected to your mission. But how many times in in this, and I've, I've asked this question to several people and I said, Hey, they'll say, um, yeah, I bought this trip at, I went to this charity auction with a buddy of mine about this, bought this deal. Really? Oh, that's awesome. Good deal. Well, have what's, so what's the deal about? And this is months after, this is six months after they didn't really know what the mission was. They remembered it was something about, well, it's something about some kids or something. They remembered they bought it. And I said, oh, really? I said, well, I'm sure they probably followed up with you. No, you know, I really haven't heard anything. Oh, yeah, that's rough. And and I'm just, and you know, and we're talking something that's $15,000. Yeah. And I know this guy. He's got deep pockets. Yeah. And I'm like, holy smokes, that was a lost opportunity. I got so, this yeah, I got this rule that I've been saying to myself, Jay, over and yeah. over and over again recently, where it's never a bad time to say thank you. And you can well, start it's not. right then. It's never you can it, start it, it, right then. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's gratitude true. and thank and thank you are, you know, synonymous in my book right now. That's how I feel about it. And I just think that, that opportunity cannot be wasted, especially in the moment. Like you said, mm-hmm. I love that. I love profiling those donors in the moment. I think that's fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, when we're talking about big money, big impact, you know, strategies for asking. So that's, that's one of the things is just, you know, who do we ask the identification of new? And that's just something I wanted to reiterate, but, but I want to talk about now is one of the things that I think is absolutely the most, the, and I, I had, a, I had a coaching call with an organization last night, yesterday afternoon, they're wanting to, they need to raise about $350,000. Um, and the executive director, he, he made this comment. He goes, well, we just don't want to go to the well too many times. And I just said, well, I, I said, I, I respectfully disagree with that. And he goes, what do you mean? What I said, what do you mean go to the well too many times? Do they believe in what you're doing? Yeah. Yeah. Do they have capacity to, to give more? Yes. So you're saying that you're not worthy? That Do you think that they're, they're keeping track? Hmm. A rough one. Whoa, rough you know, one. Trevor called. This is the hold on, hold on, Trevor. Let me look at something. Yes, I, I see this is the third time that you've asked me in the last 24 months. And I'm sorry, but we, this is, we have only two times per one, you know, yeah, you hit the one quota. time per 12 month deal. Yeah. You've hit your allotted asks. We can't ask anymore. I want, I want you guys to understand people that care about your mission. And this is something, and I, I know this is true. I know, not I think, not an opinion. My experience is, and I can give you, um, I'll give you a couple, but I've got multiple ways I can tell you this. When somebody that has significant capacity, and I'm talking they can write a check for $10,000 and not miss it, when they have significant capacity, they believe in your mission and they invest in it they are willing to invest more to ensure that you fulfill your mission. Mm. They want to be a part of it. They want to be a part of a win. Well, they do, but I want to give, I want to give you a, I want to give you a a non, non, nonprofit thought. Okay. So let's say that Trevor called me up and he said, Hey, Jason, I'm, I'm, I want you to invest uh, $10,000 into this company. I'm doing this, this venture. Okay. I said, okay. And, and, and me and 10 other, me and nine other people. So there are 10 of us, we put a hundred together. We put a hundred thousand dollars in. So I've got this and Trevor comes back and he comes and says, Hey guys, um, you know, we've the hundred thousand, this is where we're at. This is what we need to do. But to get to the next step, we actually need another $25,000. We go around the room. There's 10 of us because we're, we get first right. And I say, yeah, I, I'm in. Who else is in? $25,000. we are all in for another $2,500 a piece. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why would we do that? Because you want to see well, it succeed. Because here, well, let me, let me tell you. 
It's to protect the first 10,000 that I put in. Because if I don't put the other 2,500 in, if we don't get the other 25,000, we're done. Short, it's short capital we and you're done. We can't finish. It's, a, it's yeah. called a capital call. Yep. So in other words, if I give, if, you know, if, an, if a person of significant capacity gives money to your organization, you know, they ask questions like, what's your plan? What, you know, tell me about your board. Tell me about your, you know, your five-year goals. What are you trying to accomplish? What's this money going to go to? Because we're talking about asking for, I'm talking about asking for large money, mm -hmm. you know, 50,000 or more. Okay. Let's just say we're going to use that. That's the thing, kind of things that they think about because I don't want to put my money in something that's going to shut down tomorrow. Totally. It's an that's investment. Why, that's why desperation it does not does not deserve uh, to receive those things. When you go to somebody going, "Hey, look, man, if we don't get some money, Trevor, if we don't get if we don't get some more money, another fifty grand, we're going to shut our doors, and all these kids are going to have to go somewhere." And you know what Trevor's going to say? Let's go ahead and shut the doors now. I want to know where those kids are going to go because that's who I'm, I'm going to go invest money into. I'm protecting them. For some reason, your deal's not working, so yep. i got to go do that. So desperation is a, is a bad play, okay? Yep. Nobody wants to invest in, a, in, a, in something that's burnt. You know, nobody wants to invest into a building that's on fire, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not suggesting that you are. I'm saying but that's why that doesn't work with people. Desperation doesn't want to do it. But when you tell people... This is what we've done. This is what we're doing. This is what we're going to do. And to get there right here, we need another 50 grand to make this happen. And this is what our goal was. We're $50,000 short and we don't want to, we want to make sure that every kid gets to go to camp. Yep. That means something, especially for the guy that's already give you 10, 20, $50,000. Now he may not do 50, but he may say, well, you know what? I can't do 50, but I can do 10. Yeah, I was thinking negotiation. I just, I just think that all those things are open, right? So some guy says, "Hey, I can do twenty five. Uh, some well, gal says, "I can do twenty five. And here's the thing: when people have significant capacity, the one thing that they have a lot of is money, and they don't. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's not. Don't ever let money be the problem. And I literally heard, and I may have, I've said this before, but I was listening to an executive director tell a group, and this, there were some board members in this group, and you know, she made some comment, you know, we because we had just done a fundraiser. And, uh, and I was part of it and they had raised some money and she said, you know, it's just great. We hit our goal. We did this. We won't have to turn any kids, kids away. And one of the guys that's on her board and a significant donor has a lot of money, but he's given a lot of money. Mm -hmm. He said, and I, and I just overheard this. I wasn't part. So I'm just, but I was, I mean, he didn't care cause he didn't care who heard it, mm -hmm. but uh, he literally said, wait a minute, what are you talking about? You didn't have to turn kids away. Well, this last year we had, we didn't have enough. We had to turn some kids away. He was visibly angry. And this is a very gentle man. I mean, he is, he is mm -hmm. very kind, very soft spoken. Doesn't, you know, just really, very, really, really kind. And he's got a lot of money. He's, mm -hmm. you know, and very, very generous with it. He said, let me tell you something. And he pointed, and I've just, I'm just, it was so, uh, so you could just see visibly, don't ever let money be a reason one of these kids can't come to camp. So what, the reason I'm sharing this with you is people that care about your organization, people that care about, that have invested money into it, they have a vested interest in seeing it succeed. For sure. Now, Especially if they've the, given already. Now, Especially if the only given. person that you're going to is, you know, if Trevor, and Trevor's given 90% of the money for the funds, yeah, Trevor's going to feel a little, he's going to say, okay, we got to have a different plan because this isn't an organization where we're having run, for, this isn't a fundraiser, this is a Trevor raiser, okay? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they also don't want to do it because they know that they can't do it in perpetuity. Even if they may have significant funds, they don't want that. They want to have community, want to have other stakeholders. Because then if they if you get somebody who does want to do that, then they have ulterior motives and it's ego, control, there's something else going on. It's very narcissistic. So that's not what we're looking for either. We don't want to have somebody coming in trying to take over our organization because that happens. Mm -hmm. But so I, I want you to keep in mind, you know, Becky, you know, here's a great example. And Becky will test to this. I'm going to use your story, Becky. Becky went to a 
got a guy to un fund underwrite an event that she was doing and he underwrote the bathrooms. That's why it's a fun story because this guy happened to be a plumber. And if I tell her the story wrong, please forgive me. But that started the conversation. Well, then he said, well, Hey, I've got a boat on Lake. Well, it wasn't a boat. It was a 50 foot yacht. If I, if I remember the story, right. And they sold it twice for $10,000 a piece for like a weekend trip on it or something and 20,000. He was excited to do it, yeah. ecstatic to do it, to make that donation. Yeah. But if Becky would have said, well, he's already given me money. Uh, no, it's okay. Yeah. No, I, don't, get, I appreciate that generosity. Yeah. But doing that. What do we, what do we call it, man? The abundance mindset. Is that what people are lacking? Because I just think that there's a tremendous amount of fear insecurity thinking with our own wallets that's what i it, went I to the well happens. too many times yeah i was like listen i'm not a wealthy man so i don't know what it's like to to um you know write a fifty thousand dollar check to a nonprofit. i've never done that before maybe one day that'd be awesome and i would i would relish that opportunity um but i do know people that can jason knows people that can we speak to organizations all the time that have fifty thousand dollar donors we spoke in organizations before that have gotten what the the gal that passed away left a million dollars to the friend uh, that in in Oklahoma City that that you know uh, who's been on the 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 webinar. Well, she'd gone. been on she'd been given like two hundred and fifty dollars a year for a pledge in an envelope. Yeah, left the organization a million dollars, and at the end she left a million dollar endowment to him. Yeah. So I just I just I mean that's a I'm trying to that's an off brand story, but I just think that there could be if we just can just shake that that mindset loose in our mind and just let go of any thoughts or jay the economy or inflation or hey i'll tell you something a little thing that folks might not know or maybe you do so forgive me um uh, folks that you know when there's blood in the water so to speak economically the folks that have wealth actually actually profit from it you mean you know what i mean that's like they're not you you might think because you're hearing on the news that folks are suffering they might very well be right Mm -hmm. Folks with significant capacity, I'm 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 broad stroking it, are not always suffering. Sometimes they're profit. they're still rich. They're at the end of the day, they're still yeah. wealthy, right? And they still want to give. They still believe in giving it. And and I have tearing never, that down. You know, tearing in thirty years, down. in thirty years in my community, where we've seen multiple booms and busts because we're really tied to the oil and gas industry here in Oklahoma City. Yep. And um, I've never ever ever yep. in thirty years of doing this stuff. Have I ever sat there and going, well, boy, that was, you could sure tell it was, nobody was buying this year. In fact, half the time we'd go in there thinking it was going to be worse and it wasn't. We raised yeah. record amounts. And yeah. I, this is on a multitude of events. Yeah. You know, when Becky said something. I love and, that and point, this Becky. Is the, this is the I second. I love starting here and, and then, you it's, know, it's we find It's fun that you medium. said this yeah. because it kind of leads into the next point. Is, it's real. You know, that you can't go to the well too many times, okay? And that when you do, when you have asked a major give a donor way above their capacity and notice what she said. I want, you know, if y'all haven't read the comments, she said almost every time I've asked a major donor for a gift way above their capacity, they have just laughed and said, well, I can't do that, but here's XX dollars and they still give generously. Really simple story. I had somebody that I, I went and asked the lady for some money. She said, well, what do you think? And I said, a ah, hundred thousand would be a great start. And she started laughing and she goes, well, I'll give you a thousand. Hmm. And I said, awesome. That's thank you. She wound up giving six grand. This was a very small event. This was a, she was the, the top donor. I mean, we, have to start you know, we were, we were selling Christmas trees in July. I'm yeah, telling yeah. you. Okay. So it was kind of a crazy little thing. My point is you can't predetermine what they're willing to do. And that brings me to my third part. So, you know, people willing to give, if you're going to ask them for a number, make it big. Love okay. It. Let them tell you, well, I can't quite, I pre they're actually going to be flattered that you ask them for that. Ooh. Believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. Ego plays. Ego, ego is in play here. So if you, you know, and I'm talking about people that, you know, have, we're talking about people that can write a check for $10,000 and not miss it. Okay. So please understand. I'm not talking about, you know, you're asking the school teacher, you know, who's, you know, 
that's not what I'm asked. That's what I'm saying. You're asking your friendly neighborhood fundraisers over here. You know, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about people that, you know, that have given gifts of 10 or 20, $30,000. And you ask them for something. If you're going to ask for a dollar amount, make it big. And I'm going to give you a great point. We've got a friend who works for the V foundation. He went to go, they were asking for five-year commitments he had it in his mind. He knew this guy was qualified. He could go do it. He went to go and he was going to ask for $50,000 a year in a five-year commitment, $250,000. This is how he gets met. He said, I go in there, guy comes in. Hey man. Hey, great. Thanks for coming. Hey, I appreciate that. He goes, look, I got to just tell you, I'm not going to be able to do what I planned on doing because he said, my wife's on me. And, you know, we've kind of got some commitments out there. And so I've kind of got to just pull back a little bit, but just let me get through this year and next year. And then maybe we can bump it up. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Now I can tell you, what do you guys think that my friend Casey was thinking? Our friend Casey. Now he was going to go in and ask for 25, 50 for $50,000 a year for 250. He was thinking, well, maybe I'll get 25. Mm Mm-hmm. See, he was thinking in his mind and had no concept of what this donor was thinking. The donor said his starting number, the reduced number was a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. His commitment of your commitment was $500,000 with saying, well, let me kind of get some stuff done and I'll be able to give some more. We got to get outside of our numbers. Mm -hmm. What we think as, and, and that happens with wealthy people too, mm-hmm. you know? I don't think we can speak to that enough. I've had, I've had guys that are rich guys that have a lot of money, private jets, all the stuff, and they're sitting there looking at this guy. You know, Jason, he's got a lot of money. I'm looking at my friend going, you're worth like $200 million, right? It's all, it's all perspective, okay? So you got to take all our stuff and just set it aside. Set all that aside. So if you're going to ask somebody with capacity to give some money, you better ask them big. Because the other thing is their ego works both ways. Mm-hmm. They've invited you to come. You know, you've asked to come and see them, and they're going to sit down. So how do we come up and how do we figure that out, Trevor? Okay. Mm-hmm. So how do, we, how do we figure out what it is when we're asking for money? How do we figure out what what is the number we're going to ask for? Oh, I like I think we always start big. I think it well, ties in. I think you know, of course, but, it, but if yeah. you're asking a billionaire to give you a million dollars and he yeah. can give you, he was willing to give you ten, how do you figure that out? I mean, I'm going to tell you what I think, but I, I I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you a strategy for this. Um, and and you know we've got a friend that um, uh, a nonprofit. She works down in El Paso. She's on here from time to time. And she is a prolific asker. She has zero fear. Mm -hmm. And once she set that apart, she took where she does not care. It doesn't mean anything to her. She completely removed all, all this stuff, all the, the blinders, the wall. Yeah. Just all the, the preconceived notion of what somebody could or couldn't do. She just asks. Mm -hmm. And she got somebody the, she sold the naming rights to a room, to a single room for a half million dollars. And the person didn't even want to put their name up. Mm. They said, yeah, we don't want to put our name on anything. Well, I just want to give you the money. So and, and my point is, Sandra, you, know, you got, if it's a million, half million, 10 million, 50 million, you know, you start talking about multi-year, you know, or, or big capital campaigns. That's not, I don't have anything to share. I can give you some names of people, but that's just not what I do or what I know anything about. It's not what we do. But when it comes to asking people for money, what I do know is they want to know what their money's going to buy. What does my money get me? I'm not saying, a, and I'm not su- suggesting I'm talking about a restricted gift. I, I'm talking about specifics. Mm-hmm. You know, but uh, to do that, I'm saying in general, what does it do? Our goal is to, and, and that's what you got to start is what our goal is. What are we yeah, trying to do? It's got to tie to the mission. You know, we're trying to send 500 kids to camp. Okay. 
500 kids to camps, half million dollars, cost a thousand bucks to send a kid to camp. And this is, I'm just using this. And those of you guys that have joined us before, you know, I always send kids to camp. We, that's, that's kind of how we build it. A lot so of kids that want to all go. your missions, every mission though, I don't care who you are. You can do the same thing. Absolutely. And uh, happy to help you on a coaching call. So we're going to send 500 kids to camp. So my question is how many kids are you willing to send a kid, you know, and they go, well, how much are you thinking? I said, well, we need to send 500 kids. If you want to pay for all of them, that's okay too. Because what you do is you put it back in their court. Cause I don't know. I really, there's, I'm not a mind reader. You're not a mind reader. Unless they've said, Hey, look, I've got an extra hundred grand. I'm trying to decide who to give it to you. I want to talk, call you. I wanted to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. But how many of you had ever had somebody call you up and say, this is how much money I have. I want to give away to you. Can I get a show of hands? Anybody? Anybody? We need to find a place to put this. No one. No one. Yep. Zip. Yep. Okay. So is anybody a mind reader? Anybody? Not, not yet. Because if you are, we're going we're gonna to set you up and help. We, we, want, we, got a job for you. we should probably have you on the podcast. Yeah. yeah. Mind reader. <laughs> we'll have you on the guest. We'll make you up, put you on the panel. Okay. So, you know. Exactly. Christy said, I try not to make the decision for him. And that's what happens. If you make the decision for him, you know, I, I had a guy tell me, Jason, if Jason would have asked or tell the executive director, I got the guy to get it raised his hand for $25,000. He said, well, if Jason would have asked for more, I'd have given more. Or I might, he said, I might've given more. So the point is we have, we, we you know, when we start throwing out numbers, it really gets a little dicey. Um, and how do we do that? So what I've learned is the way in my experiences and the nonprofits that we've worked with and that I've been part of and done stuff, when we take and have the mission and we tie it to what that money's going to do, that's whenever you free them up because then it's not about money. It's just about units. Help. Yep, it's, it's about how help. much am I going to help? Because I didn't give them half a million dollars. I sent 500 kids to camp. Boom. Yeah. And if they give 500,000, that's great. But they're going to tell you where they want to be real fast. They know. I, I promise you. I promise you. When you go to sit down and you sit, if somebody asks you and, or you ask somebody for a meeting and they take the meeting, they know you're going to ask for money and they already have a number. If they have any idea what you're asking about, they've already got a number in mind. Yep. I never had somebody come to my office because they usually said, Hey, we've got this cap, this campaign coming up. We'd like to do this. I had a number in my mind of what I was going to do. Otherwise I'd tell them I didn't have time. So if I didn't, if I'm telling them I'm going to have time, that's just, a, that's a no. I'm not in, I can't do anything. Mm -hmm. But if I said, I want you to come see me, I'm just speaking as a, as a, some, as a, you know, I'm small potatoes. I mean, I'm, we're talking $10,000 stuff. Um, that's, I had a number in mind and I, most everybody I know, that's what they say too. You know, I've said, most, well, how, you know, most people got in that position for a reason and they're pretty calculated, right? In yeah. a good way. Right. So that can't be underestimated. I mean, you need to understand your, your, target audience, I guess you would call it, right? You know, um, and and most people think like that. Of course, there's a different personality types and we've gone into that on, on various webinars with Randall and what have you. It's very impactful understanding the personality type. You can pick up a lot of things very, very quickly, analytical driven and what have you, make decisions quick, yada, yada, yada. But yeah, most of those folks have an idea already. They know, hopefully, of course, they know, you know, what kind of work that you're doing. They understand what community you're in, what community you're serving and impacting. And absolutely. Um, but like you said, it, I, I, I almost wanted to say something. I was uh, a little apprehensive about saying Jay, but it's almost not about the money at that point. When it's you not talk about the impact. Yeah. It's about the impact about, because they've got rich people have a lot of money. That's not, that's not a question. They've got capacity, especially once they, you know, they cross over and, and as people get older, they typically cross over into, into that side, you know, some of the, the, the richest person on the planet, you know, spent the first half of his year life making all this money and the second half trying to give it away. And he, he had too much money. He could never give it away. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you know, that's sounds like a fun game. Yeah. It's fun. It'd be fun. <laughs> wouldn't it? But that's the whole thing is 
um, well, he, you know, in his, he was trying to atone for all the things that he did to get to build that wealth, I think. Um, and that happens a lot, you know, yeah. it's, if you want to be a billionaire, it's, you got to make, usually they've stepped on some necks somewhere along the way. Um, and no offense to any billionaires are on here. Uh, I, I just, I, you can't spend other people's money. You just can't. Um, doesn't matter whether they're a $500 donor or a $5 million donor. And it's really, um, what's the word? Hmm. Challenging whenever you can't, if there's any <laughs> billionaires on here, can yeah, I get your number? Yeah. yeah. So that's the whole, that's the whole thing. I, I, you're going to know when, so, and, and when somebody comes to you and so, you've got a donor and they come to you and that you know that it's not some ego, you know, narcissistic purpose. Now it may be because they want their name all over it and that's okay if it's depending on the situation. But just that means that's what they've done is they've given you permission to take the bat in both hands and just whack them real hard. Um, but don't be afraid of that. You know, have your numbers, have your stuff. The key to, you know, to making big asks is to let them know that they're going to make a big impact because that's what they want. Massive. Show them the success stories. Show them what it's done. Um, uh, yeah, great, you know, when you... A, when you it's can, a great opportunity to be lofty as well. You know? Well, they want to see stuff. They they want to see things exceed. And whenever they really get invested in something, they they're going to give you lots of help. They want to give you time. They want to give you opinions. They want to do that An stuff. And sometimes you have to go to someone else. And, and sometimes yeah. you have to go. Hold on now, Becky. Yeah. yeah, I appreciate that and all that stuff. We've kind of got this plan. We're executing you. So I need some dollars. Mm -hmm. I need some gas in the tank, and we'll have that conversation. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm paraphrasing here. You know, but it's, it's as that stuff goes on, but those are the, really the, the things that I see that hold people back from making asks and getting that to across the board. One is that they think they've gone to the well too many times Two, they're not identifying those new donors whenever they have an opportunity. It's right there in front of them and they just blow it off because it happened to me. The opportunity I was the so biggest, big. I was the biggest contributor at an event not at the night of the event. Okay. There were some sponsors that gave more money than I did. I was the biggest night of contributor, not a peep. The only thing I got was a call saying, when are we going to get your check? So wild. So, you know, it kind of, it kind of didn't feel very good. And, and I, I mean, I never gave them another nickel, quite frankly. Mm. And they did call me afterwards and said, Hey, we've got a guy. We, this was the funny thing. They called me and said, you know, this guy gave $5,000 this deal. We'd like to really get set up a meeting. Do you know him? Oh, is that the deal? So I will give you 10,000 and I'm not, I'm not trying to look for a stroke or that. Please miss, don't misunderstand. I'm, I'm just saying I was in a, in the, in my business at the time I, I could do that. So I was able to do it, but yeah, it kind of didn't feel very good. And I think that's where we've got to be sensitive to that as fundraisers. When we're talking to people yeah. that, you know, I've literally had, I witnessed, or I didn't witness this, but had an executive director. She went to uh, somebody that had a lot of money and she said, hey, we're thinking about asking Joe for some money. And we're going to do that. And he goes, well, why didn't you ask me? Of course, she smiled and said, well, I think I just did. And he <laughs> picked up the phone, called Joe, and they put a bunch of money together for something. But my point is that it, it does it kind of bothers him whenever you don't get that thoughtfulness in doing that. So I think once again, back you know, to thank you, it's got to be looking for these new timely. donors, making sure that you're thanking them, having that plan gratitude. You know, if it's a, if you got to take just three minutes, I wrote, a, had, a, had to write a bunch of these out and it took me three minutes a card, mm -hmm. three minutes to write my message, put it in the envelope, write the address on it and put a stamp on it. Mm -hmm. Three minutes. Um, I got a, we got a good so, question. We got a good question yeah. from Levi brother. Um, uh, Levi, I can't apply a percentage to the question. I just want to let you know, it's a, it's a, it's a high one. It's a high percentage. I think you should absolutely, they should play a massive role in fundraising introductions and major gift acquisition. That's not even a question. I think that 
I think it's a great opportunity for the people exercise because they know people. Um, they have a Rolodex yeah. of people that that have capacity. That's quite well. You hope I, they do. You can I overspeak, Jay? Can I say that's the reason no. why they're on the board? They um, have a, they, that's the reason why they're on the board. Well, they sure, a, that's the reason. They have a the fiduciary re responsibility to raise money. Boards have two purposes: yeah. hire and fire the executive director, and yep. to raise money. Yep. That's now there's child, a few other it. things and oversight and stuff like that. I get yeah. that, but I'm saying that's the reason. But I you think know, if you not... set that tone early with the board, that that's mm -hmm. our expectation, for lack of a better term, that is the expectation. That's what you're there for. We're, and I'm, I'm going to cross streams, but it'll, it'll, it'll apply. We're constantly, Jason and I were talking about it, and I didn't even share some, some other stories with you, Jay, this morning, because we had to get going. But we're constantly talking about, it's like, we deal with a lot of events, right? That's our, that's kind of our, that's our business, right? And, and we're constantly just baffled by people that will put roadblocks in front of themselves to raise money. It's like, why are we here? Like, why are you having yeah. the event? You know what I mean? Can we just get back to that? And I actually think that that, I, I think that that could really apply to, and you could set the tone early with the meetings and, and the agenda. It's like, we're here to raise money. We are here to advance the mm -hmm. mission, Br break out your phone and let's get to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? So absolutely. So, you know, I mean, I, I'd like to know what those books are. We, Christy. Could, we could do. A, yeah, we'd love to hear that there. You know, the thing about. So I'm going to suggest this. Your bowl, your board. What I feel is that they should be neck deep in the middle of it. 100 percent. Absolutely. 100 percent. That's their job. That they is, should that know people. They job. should. They, yeah, they're, they should. They, be they champion you know, networkers. I'm going to go even, even. Uh, you know, you're going to find people on boards of all shapes and sizes. Okay, we get that. That's fine. You're going to have. You know, I think that you need to have from the homemaker, you know, to the CEO. And I'm not laying a gender on that. I'm just saying the role. I mean, I think that you know you need to have all that thing because that's diversity within your board in the community is what builds great organizations because you've got all those perspectives and connections. Okay. You may have somebody that's on your board that, you know, is not well connected in the money side, but they can put a volunteer pool together like that. Um, so those are, those are things that I, you know, and, and that's the boards are a whole enigma in themselves. Um, but they are financially responsible and legally responsible for the organization. I, I the first 100%. thing I do whenever 100%. I talk to a board, whenever I, I work with a board, the very first thing I ask them, I said, how many of y'all know that when, if y'all get sued, that, that the organization gets sued, that you'll be named on the lawsuit? They will be named. And they yeah. go. It's a little, got a little serious all of a sudden. Really? Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I just thought I came here for the cookies. Jason, you, you said know, something very interesting to me we'll a while nice back. Snacks. You said something very interesting to me a while back where you said, because um, we've had a number, a myriad of um, executive directors on the, the pod, mm -hmm. on the webinar. And um, you said something that was very, very interesting. Levi, I don't know if you're the executive director, uh, if that's your role at your organization. But you said something that is sounds simple, but yet very impactful. The board's job is to support the ED and make sure they have everything they need right? To make sure that they have all the tools at their discretion possible to help. Good. Awesome, man. Yeah. Thanks for coming on too, Levi. Um, everything to lean on them, right? Or, or the, the ED should lean on the board, right? And well, if you don't the ask, whole thing that, you won't get yeah. it. You know what well, I mean? The, you know, we had a, a friend came on the other day and that's what he said. He goes, well, the board wasn't doing anything, but he goes, I didn't ask. I didn't ask. I, I had a meeting with a, with a executive yeah. director just th this yeah. week. Yeah. Um, and I said, when's, when's your next board meeting? He goes, I don't know. We don't I haven't had one. Yep. I said, right. well, when's How many do you have? How many do you have? Well, we have to have two a year. Yep. I said, well, that's not enough. Yep. And I, you know, and we're, we're, he's got to, he's got to go raise a bunch of money, but this guy's got to go raise a bunch of money. This other organization, yeah. they got to go raise a million dollars. And I said, to get the donors that you want to get, you're going to have to get your, get your, get everything lined up because they're going to ask those questions. Yep. hundred percent. You know, maybe not all of them, but some of them are because I'm asking right now. I think you set that tone early and often and just always come back to it. It's like, Hey, and you know, Hey, what are you doing for me? It's not like that, of course. And I know you know that, right? Yeah. 
Um, well, but I want to, I want to, I want to kind of, we're getting close to having to wrap up. And, and so I want to, you know, get to any other questions you have, but I just want you to, you know, if you're, when you're going through this about asking for money, you know, st stop thinking about money and start thinking about impact. What is this mm. money going to do? Okay. And when you start asking, because we feel funny if I go and I say, Hey, Trevor, um, you know, Hey, look, we're going to go do this. We've got this so, such and such going on and I'm looking for a hundred thousand dollar donor. It's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if I, you know, and it feels funny, it feels weird, feels, you know, there's just, when you start talking about money, it just, the tone gets really changed. Cool. But when good... you sit there and go, Hey, we're looking to send a hundred kids to camp and it, it costs a thousand dollars to camp. And I'm asking, we're, we're, we got to get a hundred kids. Mm -hmm. I, like how many kids would you be willing to do? I know you can, I know you can sell, sell, send a bunch, but um, I don't know what, where you're at. So where would you want it like to be? It changes that. So, you know, we're, we're asked, we're, we're asking them to invest an impact, whatever that mm -hmm. may be. Okay. That's where you got to get to. That's where you've got to get to help your board get to, yep. because then your board can go make the ask too. And they're not asking their friends for money or their people for money. I love They're that. just simply saying, Hey, we're going to, we're, Hey, I'm part of this organization. We send kids to camp. We're trying to get to a hundred kids. How many, it's a thousand bucks a kid. How many kids would you like to send? Yep. 100%. They're not asking any friends for 20 grand. Now they know the friend can write a check for 20 grand. And you know, we've got to help our boards help us. So, you know, coming back to that, but the board's job that. is there to, to help you guys. And I know everybody has a board story. There's not one nonprofit oh. that has the perfect board. Not one. Yeah. We've heard some crazy Everybody stories. has an crazy issue. Answer. Everybody's yeah. got a story. Everybody's got some stuff. And that's just, you know, the life in the nonprofit world. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Any and other questions? Any, for sure. I'm not trying to be a broken record, but if you can, if you can just early and often just come back to the mission anyone that's flying off into orbit that's on the board or anyone that has any mm -hmm. part of uh, of your organization they can come right back to earth very easily if you do yeah. but you have to be you have to be the driving force for that right well executive um, directors executive directors sometimes they 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 get their role reversed they think mm -hmm. the board's there to tell them what to do and really they're there to tell what the board what to do I in healthy that. organizations and what i mean by that is that doesn't mean you're dictating it's just saying this is what we're going to do i need your help this is where you're we're going for a reason yeah and the board's got to The board says, yeah, let's go. Come we're on here, with we're, we're going to help you go get the money and fuel it Come and do all it. this stuff. Yep. Um, uh, I want to share a story real quick that, okay. that I kind of think helps tie this together. Um, wow. I had a mad cow moment and it's gone. It was going to be a I, life change. It was going to be a gonna life say, changer for you I was going to say, I, I, you, were, you were talking, you were pre, uh, telling a previous story a second ago. And I, I love your line where you're like, I'm here. I, I, I uh, embellished a little bit or I added to it uh, your line, but I know you can, I know you care. Well, I'm here because yeah. you can, and I know that you care. So where, yeah. can, you know, where is this going to fit? I love that line. Mm -hmm. I think that's underutilized. Um, hey, not one up in you, Christy, on the book front, and I appreciate you sharing those. It's fantastic. Um, we had a really uh, wonderful guest. Uh, Lori Zoskraska wrote the boardroom playbook. Now she comes from the fortune 1000 for-profit side of things, selling mm -hmm. advertising for television and what have you and radio and stuff for uh, national broadcasting. Mm -hmm. uh, forgive me if I'm misspeaking about the, the different uh, organization, but you get the gist. And now she coaches nonprofits on the big ask and she wrote the boardroom playbook. And I think she's lovely. And we did a great pod with her. I think we had her on the webinar too, if I'm not mistaken. We've done 115 of these, so forgive me. Um, but uh, Lori Zoskraska, the boardroom playbook. Awesome. Let's just put a link in there. When we send this out, we'll put a link to that. Yeah. To that one as well. Cause it was really good. And she talks yeah. about more She's of the make the big ask. Yeah. Um, you know, really and it good. just reiterates all the stuff we're talking about, but you know, when you want to go get big money, you gotta get big asks. Yep. Profile your donors. You guys do these events, rich friends come with rich friends. They show up and you know, people that, and you're going to know whenever they bid on stuff and buy stuff, even if they don't buy anything, you know, somebody was raising their hand. They were real, you know, the, the dinner on the yacht that sold for 10,000. Well, I know that Trevor was bidding on it. He didn't get it bought, but he was bidding on it. And so I'm, I'm, we're profiling that and keeping track of that stuff. What's wrong with saying thank what, you, even if they didn't win? No, that's my point. Well, I that's mean, that's what I'm saying, bro. I'm just like, what's wrong with that? I saw you, you know, I mean, I think that's awesome. I just love that. Yeah. How, how, how many people do that? How many people thank people that didn't even win the bid, but they were driving it up? You know what I mean? 
if they were bidding twelve thousand dollars on something, they have capacity. Maybe they didn't win, but I just think that's lovely. I think I'll, lovely I'll tell you all funny deal. So I was at an event in um, uh, San Francisco. I was I was doing a charity auction in San Francisco. There was a young man that bid on stuff. Okay, he bid several times, mm -hmm. and they were saying, you know, and, yes. and the director, the, the development was was saying, well, you know, this year our our guest, he's kind of from out of state. It's not going to be as good as was because the year before was phenomenal. We had a guy who had been a, it was first the scouts of the Bay area, boy scouts, of the Bay area. And this was a formal Eagle scout. This was, this is a great story. This guy was an Eagle scout. That was the guest of honor. Two out of three of his sons were Eagle scouts. His dad was an Eagle scout. So it was all about scouting and he was in the real estate business and, and out in the Bay area. All of these people came, they, just raised a ton of money the next year um not as many people not as you know the the get the the, the honoree was from out of state and um uh they come up there but at the end there was a we had this deal and the guy the big big bang trip um this young man was bidding on it and he bid from the start all the way up he didn't get it bought but afterwards, I went down and I got this young man and I said, I want you to introduce him. I, I, actually, I went and got the the president of the organization. I said, I want there's somebody I want you to meet. Mm -hmm. Took him over there and I introduced him to this young man. This young man who had came the year after bidding on stuff, try, raising money, you know, he he did make some did make a donation. I said, I want you guys to meet. This young man was the black sheep of his family. He was the son that was not an Eagle Scout, mm -hmm. but he had done well in life and he wanted to contribute because he saw what a great impact this organization had on his How family. Cool that? How cool and that? so I put these two guys together and then they, you know, went and did their thing, but that wouldn't have happened if we hadn't have put them together. Cause he thought, well, you know, I, I was, I'm the black sheep. I didn't, I wasn't in scouting, but he cared and he had money and he yeah. wanted to be part of it. So all those things matter. Bidders make, do make buyers, Lori. I'm sorry, Levi, you're exactly right. And, and all those things happen because somebody's raising their hand. So seeing that, being that part of it, um, when somebody does make a significant you know, impact, that means they're into it. So we know them. Let's go find out how well we can connect with them. Yep. So For sure. any more questions? We're going to scoot here in a minute. I got a trip I got to give away. 115 episodes wow 125 that's a big milestone is it not 125 is a big milestone yeah well it's okay we'll make it we'll make it fun we'll make that one fun thanks everyone for coming folks that we've never seen before i appreciate you um uh jason is one of the most prolific minds in fundraising that i've ever met in my life yeah, not the whatever. most prolific hang in there bro but this people exercise that i mentioned to you levi about getting your board engaged any of these you know, any of these points that we mentioned, I'm happy to help too, um, because he's trained me into being a, a, a decent fundraiser, or at least a, a, a strategist. But um, we have a free coaching option on our website, hgafundraising.com. Just click the free coaching button. We do it week in and week out. We give you a half hour or more of our time. It's absolutely free. There's no strings attached. It's what we do. Um, so if you need anything in that regard, or if we can help you, please do. Uh, and then also, uh, what else? Oh, hey, nonprofits raise more money uh really awesome pod that we're doing uh for a long time now as a matter of fact um two to three episodes every single week and check that out really good really good we mentioned john Somerville, executive director talk about his board talk about leading um the organization he came from a for-profit background as well we did a great episode with lance kawaguchi from cure brain cancer which he came from an investment banking background Check out Hey Nonprofits Raise More Money. It's a shameless plug, but it's really impactful. They're short form, 15, 20 minute episodes, but they seem to really be helping um, because we're getting some really, really awesome feedback. So wherever you mm -hmm. consume your pods, you can watch them on YouTube at our HGA fundraising page, Spotify, Apple. Yeah, probably, you know what? If you don't want to wait support. for all that, if you don't want to, and you just like, hey, I just need some help now Happy. on anything to do with yep. fundraising, that's kind yep. of our block. Uh, Jason at hjfundraising.com, Trevor at hjfundraising.com. We're here to help. Yep. We don't want anything except we just want to share your time and help you raise more money. 
Okay. Yep. I promise you, we're not going to try to sell you anything, put anything in there. We are in the trip and experience business. We do put those out there to help you raise more money. We have a great software platform, but that's not what the purpose of this is. We want to help you guys get things lined up. And so I know several, you know, people that are on here have done this and um, we've had some great results because we're going to, you know, we're going to pull it back and tell you this straight shot shoot truth because we just get the experience of working with a thousand organizations like yours um, every year. And uh, so we're able to do that. And we just share that experience. Um, I've got a winner. Hit me. <laughs> Carol, Carol Plain, I think. Is it Plain? Patain? Patain. No, it's Patain. Patain. Hi, Carol. Carol. Hi, Carol. Right. Congratulations. Carol, right on. Trip. You can go to use for that. Right on, Carol. And uh, do that. Um, so Levi, uh, would love to share some time with you if you'd like to uh, do that. Happy to do it. We're happy, happy to help you. And uh, until next time, episode one sixteen uh, next Thursday. Yeah, we'll be next Thursday. Oh, well, hey, we'll be together. We'll be broadcasting from live from Las Vegas. Oh wow, that's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's we'll be coming to you live we're on a, from we're Las on a Vegas and summer summer conference. <laughs> so hey, it's ten o'clock in the morning. We might be a little hungover and a little sleepy, but we're gonna be here loud and proud. You guys just ought to show just to see what that what that's gonna look like. Oh my gosh! Uh, the, we're gonna, the Ask we're gonna Us have, Anything uh, episode. The Ask Us Anything episode. We're gonna have Matt Ashley with us. He's gonna be yeah. coming on with us. Uh, he's one of HGA Team members. HGA. So, Team HGA. Yep. It's gonna be and really and so fun. We'll be talking about some stuff about how to raise more money. So hope you guys Thanks, have everybody. a great week. Hey, yeah. this is a Memorial weekend, so I hope that you have a wonderful uh, Safe weekend, weekend with as your we families. Do yeah. that, and um, we'll see you back here next week. Right on, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. Appreciate everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Jay. See you, bro. Oh, thanks, Susan. Really appreciate you. All right. Awesome. Y'all take us up on our coaching offer. Please do. Happy to give you the time. So thanks so much. Appreciate everybody. Have a great holiday weekend. Everyone stay safe. Peace out.